somehow I cut my thumb. Weird. Didn't feel it. Don't know how it happened. Could have been when I was checking my bowl gouge after it came off the grinder to make sure it was sharp. But anyway, it doesn't hurt. I just don't want to get blood on my bowl. I got a little bit on there. I'll have to uh, sand off. There's a good, there's a good chip out of this here. That's right where the tree was growing. That's the middle of the tree called the pith. So I'm going to actually have to go in and, and tidy that up. I was hoping to keep a little tiny bit of where the bark was on it, but I don't think I'll be able to. That's okay. That's okay. to say how well this is going to work out. I'm going to try to turn it fairly thin and I've got the tailstock in the way for support which makes it kind of harder to start my cuts but it makes my cuts a little more secure because I don't have to worry about the, uh, the bowl flying off the lathe. So hopefully I'm just going to take that sharp edge off. off in big ribbons. Dry wood doesn't make these big long ribbons, but dry wood is also a lot tougher and dustier to turn. Okay, I have that very thin. I don't want to go any thinner than that. Even if I wanted to, I'm not experienced enough to go thinner than that. So, time for a sharpening. You might notice that I'm leaving the center here. I don't know how the camera is actually picking it up, whether it's easy to see or not, but I'm leaving a lot of the center mass in here. And uh, it's generally a good practice because it keeps a, uh, a bowl a little bit more stable. Um, having more mass is, is better for it in the center. Um, if you have the mass out here, but you take the mass in the center it's bad so you kind of want to work your way in especially with with wet wood green wood like this and you have to be careful when you go back and touch the outer rim here when you've already turned it that's where things can go sideways i'm going to try to take a light finishing cut of this but we'll see could fly apart. Very fine shavings. It 
I still got a ways to go, but uh, I got to sharpen again. It may seem silly to have to sharpen so much, but when you calculate this here started off as a, about a 10 inch diameter, just shy of 10 inches. And then you figure my lathe speed right now is about 900 RPM. And if you calculate that out, you'll be amazed at, it only takes about, I don't know, a few cuts anyway, and you're into miles that your bowl gouge is actually cut. Just imagine having one, you know, mile long piece of wood that this just scraped into. And that's, that's what's happening here. I shouldn't be cleaning this out while it's running. I shouldn't even technically be doing this, but, well, I'm doing it. All it takes, I've had a knuckle touch the rim before, and it wasn't even a sharp rim, and it took only just a little uh, moment, and it took the skin right off one of my knuckles. So now I'm going to take out that center mass. Pretty well taken out, a little more. Oh, now I can get into the bottom of the bowl. Nice. I should sharpen this, but I'm going to do just a little more of the roughing. And then before I take my final cut, or final couple of cuts. I'll sharpen then. There's still a little something up here I don't like. Am I ballsy enough to try? <laughs> this could all go sideways. I could have nothing time I'm done here. Try something a little different. Also risky. better. But not amazing. 
I may just have to take care of it when I sand. I hate sanding. Every Everybody hates sanding. Sanding sucks. Well, Justin likes sanding, but he's a contrarian. Although if you tell him he's a contrarian, he'll disagree with you. Tool rest is a little high. It wasn't apparent until I was trying to get right into the center of the bowl. I got a bit of tear out and I would love to have the balls and the talent to take one more finishing cut on that but I don't have either so I will deal with it with sandpaper when it dries. So having learned the lesson with my imbalanced piece wherever it went I took the piece that was very badly imbalanced and I put it through the bandsaw to take off a chunk about so thick about as thick as what you see here maybe slightly thicker but not by much because uh, I took off maybe I don't know quarter of an inch over here and the grain pattern is really nice on it I got a little bit of the sapwood um, I got a little bit of the crotch figure. Uh, there's a limb there, which is always nice. That could, that could actually dry out and crack and give me problems, but hopefully, hopefully not. Or maybe it just adds a little character to this. So yeah, it's, it's fairly thin. I'm going to say just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch thick, but yeah, lots of tool marks because my talent just isn't quite there. Now I've taken it off and I'm looking at it in the light a little bit better. I used to have a light for my lathe that came from the side that made it easier to see this, but I would have actually tried another finishing pass, but then I probably would have messed it up. So what can you do? I'm tempted to put a little CA glue on, uh, on that knot right there, but yeah, you know what? I'm going to put it in the shavings and uh, hope for the best. Oh, you see the sapwood on this side is really pronounced. Once it dries, I'll put it back on the lathe. There's a technique where you can put it on backwards. You put like foam on here and you put it on backwards. And then I'm going to take this. This is the tenon that I grabbed in my chuck. I'm going to take that off, but I'll leave this foot on here but I'll just make it slightly concave so it sits level. So there's my, there's my bowl.